coming to you from Strings and Things Studio in Ventura, California. I am Anne. I'm Katie. I'm Karen. And this is the Strings Unraveled Book Club. So, I got to pick this month. Yep. Uh, I chose Night Bitch by Rachel Yoder. Um, it was a new release on the Timber Books um, Instagram, and it sounded re- like it has a great cover. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it sounded enticing when I read the uh, summary, which uh, I might just be repeating what the summary was last time, but this is uh, the most consistent one that comes up. In the blazing, in this blazing smart and voracious debut, an artist turned stay-at-home mom becomes convinced she's turning into a dog. An ambitious mother puts her art career on hold to stay home with her newborn son. Two years later, she steps into the bathroom for a break from her toddler's demands, only to discover a dense patch of hair on her back, on the back of her neck, and unusually sharp canines. Her husband, who travels for work, casually dismisses her fears from faraway hotel rooms. As the mother's symptoms intensify, she struggles to keep her alter canine identity secret. Seeking a cure at the library, she discovers the mysterious academic tome, a field guide to magical woman, a mythical ethnography, and meets a group of mothers involved in a multi-level marketing scheme who may also be more than what they seem. An outrageously original novel of ideas about art, power, and womanhood wrapped in a satirical fairy tale, Night Bitch will make you want to howl in laughter and recognition. And you should. You should howl Mm -hmm. as much as you want. (laughs) So I think it's fun to start with what you guys think of the book. (laughs) I had a a weird experience with this book because I I liked it. I didn't relate to it as much because I'm not a mother. But I, you know, I can appreciate the the experience. Um, I did think it was a little slow, which it's not that long of a book, but I still <laughs> found it a little slow at some points. Um, but overall, I liked it. I I finished it maybe a week ago, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I intended to go back and re-listen at least to the last chapter, and I forgot, so um, it's not as fresh in my mind. But I know you just finished. It, I just right? finished last. Actually, this morning yeah. I finished the last thirty-five pages this morning. Um, Karen, you liked it. Any other? Impressions? I really, really liked it. Parts of it confused me, and I didn't like as much. But I would say about ninety percent like. <laughs> yeah. Overall, I enjoy. I enjoyed it. Part I was like, wh- I like to jump ahead and try to find the threads. Ooh, jump ahead where really? the threads are going to be not physically i mentally oh, okay i'm like i meant you're, no you're skimming the head <laughs> no 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 i mentally think try to make those connections ahead of time and there's places where i didn't i was confused how the connections were made it didn't make sense to me but that didn't make it wrong that just meant i didn't get it <laughs> no yeah well it's um early on i like connected that it's parallel to the uh, 1912 novel from Franz, um, Franz Kafka, The Metamorphosis, mm-hmm. which have you guys ever read? I have a feeling I did. It's or a real an abridged short book. version, maybe? Yeah. I don't remember. Well, it's I, a short book. Uh, then I probably have read it, because I, I remember that. Um, I read it. I it, My after effects of reading that book were like, I feel like I should learn German so that I can read this book in its original Mm-hmm. language because mm-hmm. i was captivated by it oh because this was not written in english initially no the franz kafka. kafka's metamorphosis oh, kafka. Yeah. Kafka. sorry uh, Everything, everything's written for the english person right <laughs> right it's all, it's all written in american <laughs> well and so i wonder if i didn't read like not the best translation of it mm. because it's such a like captivating concept yeah <laughs> and so because of that parallel again i've chosen a new novel there's no book club questions for it. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so I was like, well, I bet there's some kind of questions about a novel that's been around for 109 oh, years. So I found these AP uh, English questions, okay. summer reading oh, questions good. for uh, Kafka's Metamorphosis. And I just changed the names and characters. Well, there are no names or characters uh, in this book, right? There's no names. Well, there's no names, essentially. There's a couple. Uh, a couple. There are, of other, there are other people. Yeah. There's but... Wanda White, our um, yeah. 
Earth Mother. <laughs> and the Jens and the like Jen, uh, yeah. the, 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 the Jens. Yeah. The other mothers have. Yeah, you've heard names. of the uh-huh. Heathers, there's the Jens. Mm-hmm. But, but the mother... immediate like Lee what kind of I'm like Yeah, who's the Heathers? I bet Karen will think they're the Heathers too. Because <laughs> you and I like yeah. reference that movie yeah. as well. Yeah. Um did you have like a favorite part that stood out to you? Um, I have to go back and look at. I, I, but, yeah, there was. I think I bookmarked a couple things. It is so fresh. I uh-huh. love. Um, there's kind of this break after she goes insane with her friends, her um grad school friends. Oh, uh huh. Oh, and I then, did like that part. And then, yeah. well, I like that. But uh-huh. then we, um, but then like, fifteen twenty pages are her looking back on her childhood with her own mother. Yeah, and I, I love that. Like rewind to her mm-hmm. own mother and how that feeds forward generationally and also just i like love the imagery there's this one passage um where she's talking about everything she can do mm-hmm. um, oh yeah everything she knows how to do she can live her own life mm-hmm. she can yeah. there it is um her own wooden bone projects her sewing with play with the playground installation had all called on skills she'd gathered during her quiet Appalachian upbringing. She knew how to keep bees, dip candles, brush wool, use a spinning wheel and make yarn, dry onions and garlic, develop photographs with vegetable juices, bake absolutely anything, make every single sort of braid, sing every single sort of song, track an animal through the woods. She knew her cardinal directions, how to tell a fast pony from a slow one just by the look on its face. See, I just want to, I want her to open a workshop art studio and i want to go to her place and learn she knew enough to live inside an entire life all her own and yet her husband with his electronic skills his engineering he was the one who made all the money even though she could make a world and then to make a person to live in that world yeah yeah that was good good. yep um so i also thought the book had a slow start Uh uh-huh and i was like oh god it what was, have I chosen? <laughs> it was strange because it was slow, but also I couldn't figure out where the heck we were gonna go because I thought it was gonna be a long build up before she actually like quote turns into a dog. I know it's but happening that immediately. Happens <laughs> relatively soon into yeah. the book, and I'm like, well, where the hell are we gonna go from here? Like I couldn't figure out what the trajectory of the book was gonna be, and I was worried about her relationship with her husband and how he was going to deal with this when it inevitably he found <laughs> out about it. But he was, like, totally cool with it. And I was like, oh, I didn't see that coming. That's the power of the V. I don't know. I thought maybe there was, like, that seemed unreasonable to me. That he would just be, okay, chill. Okay. Yeah. Well, well I mean, except, dig into that. Except, except was though, because she did it on stage. Well, not everyone, but enough so that she could that it was, get to the final scene. Exactly. You know? Yeah. It was, yeah. Um, but I, But I thought maybe he was motivated by the awesome sex he was getting. Well, that's the power of the V. <laughs> I mean the vagina. Okay. Oh, it's our podcast. You can say it. Um, By JJ. That was a star. Uh, a stage whisper. <laughs> yeah. Um, I can see the levels on the computer. It's pretty small, so I think people will hear it. But... <laughs> okay. Well, if you don't know what the V is, guys, uh, turn up your volume. Um, did you, you look like you had a part you wanted to share. Oh, I was going to mention her husband, like, embracing whatever this weirdness yeah, that, happened to be. That was awesome. Yeah. Any any standout parts? Or you can think about it and yeah. pop in with any. I did not like when she killed her cat. No, I know. <laughs> I, like that part. I read that last I like, night and I was oh like. Oh my God, she's gone cray cray. Like, just my mouth dropped. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of knew it was coming right? because she talked to her and so then, much. She hated the and cat And then her son's the like, mommy, mommy. I'm like, yeah, can oh, we sh- eat it? Well, and you're earlier, like, oh god! I know earlier when she's like, and we shared the cat pretty early on, like, yeah. like when she's starting to embrace her transitions when her husband's gone, and we shared the cat. I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> like shared the cat? No, that comes later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so I'll jump into some questions. You guys can see that I have um, just lined through. I like uh, it. Oh, Metamorphosis. Totally works. And uh, uh, Greg Arsamza, I guess, is the main character. So, mother is mother. the main character here. Um, well, Night Bitch is the main character. That's how she refers to <laughs> yeah, herself. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting when she refers to herself as Night Bitch uh-huh. and, or, or refers to Night Bitch as doing things. Right. Um, or because it's third person. It's it's such an um, interesting, like, like, I have to 
to remind myself not to be bothered by this because it's mm-hmm. an internal monologue, even though it's third person. Yeah. Um, and so do you say your own name when yeah. you're thinking your thoughts? Sometimes when I'm real mad. <laughs> um, I mean, I don't think we know a lot about Rachel Yoder, but I'm going to um, like pretend I do okay. in this mm-hmm. question. What autobi- autobiographical elements are contained in Yoder's Night Bitch? Mm-hmm. Well, I-, I think she must be a woman like this. I can ima- I I can't imagine she's not a mother because she writes of the experience. I mean, just from the back cover, she holds MFA is from the University of Arizona in fiction, the University of Iowa in nonfiction, where she was Iowa Arts Fellow. She her stories and essays have been published in literary journals. Um, she lives in Iowa City with her husband and son. Okay, so that she's a mom about right. of a boy, of a toddler, <laughs> possibly, possibly. We don't know the age of her we child. Don't know. Um, and uh, she lives in the Midwest, and she's highly educated there in the go. arts. So, so it feels like she yeah. might really know what she's talking about. <laughs> well, when she's describing, I know it, my kids are mostly grown now, but I remember the that exhaustion that this was my life now. What have I done? Feeling that she's kind of gone through, like, wow, okay, I thought I would get to do more, but now this is my life. That that's i was like oh i remember those days <laughs> and also like the juxtaposition between like because i i can imagine that's how i would feel if i you know were to have a child that you love your child so much and he's the most important thing in the world and he's perfect and he's beautiful but also at the same time like this was also perfect and beautiful and mm-hmm. i want that too yeah um i i remember like maybe t- two or three years ago i was getting starbucks before work and um so i've always worked but i worked part-time and was home with my kids during the day and then worked at at anna kappa in the nights and then um now i work full-time um and so i was getting out of the car to go to starbucks and there were these two mommies with their strollers and their little ones in their stroller walking by and i was like oh how fun i really miss that i could just like start my morning whenever or after I drop mm-hmm. off the older kids and just have some like time with my little ones. And as I, they walked by and they're like, Oh, I don't know how we're going to pay for this and pay for that. And I was like, Oh yeah, I don't miss that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Plus they're big enough. They don't, they don't want me to put them in the stroller. Anymore. <laughs> that would be a little weird. <laughs> you know, 2013 and 10. Mom, we can drive. <laughs> Mirabella might be amused for a short time. <laughs> she's, she's pretty whimsical. But I mean, like, of course, not knowing much about the author, like, the way she writes this, it, it must be yeah, autobiographical auto- uh, yeah, in, in yeah. a sense. I mean, yeah. it, it has deeply personal uh, detail, but also, like, she's able to get in touch with not just motherhood, but like womanhood too. Uh-huh. Like, yeah, exactly. Um, <clears throat> okay. What is mother's identity crisis? I mean, I think we really just kind of danced around that. Yeah. She was a successful professional and she thought she could have it all. I was joking about that at work today. <laughs> and I don't think anyone got my joke about, they're like, well, how could you, um, you know, do this task too. I'm like, well, when I was a little girl, I was told I could have everything. Yeah, you could do it so, all. I'm sure I could do this one more thing. <laughs> you, I mean, you're told you can do it all all the time. And you're like, yeah, you could do anything you want. You could do everything until it comes time to do everything. You're like, I can't freaking do everything. Well, it's it, <laughs> you I mean, can do it, but they don't tell you there's a there's a the cost. cost. There's yeah, a cost 100%. to it. That I mean, it sounds like in the beginning she tried to do part time. She tried well, to she do tried both. To, uh, yeah, or even to just maintain you know, her directorship. Yeah, um, yeah. And she um, didn't like having her baby in daycare. She wanted to be with him, and so she gave that up to to have him with her. Well, it's but like then, yeah, by calling herself mother, uh-huh. she has abandoned that identity. Yeah, exactly. And night mm-hmm. bitch like allows her to bring um that identity back. Like that's her original identity, or maybe it's a new, this is a new identity of the two yeah. two selves. Um, yeah, there's a part I, I, I um, when she talks about um, what back when she's with with her friends having that luncheon, and there's this quote that she talked about. It was there that she buried. It was there. Um, oh wait, wait. This meditation, she needed to counteract that 
cud that um, she discovered with a startling pang of nausea that she had pushed all the anger and sadness, all the disappointment about how her life had turned out. It was there that she had buried the talented, plucky young woman with big ideas and an unusual point of view. Sorry. The, that young woman was down in her intestines, biding her time, or perhaps dead, suffocated, and all the shit. I love that passage I love so it. much. That, yeah, because that's—I mean, that is the—that is womanhood is a lot of blood and shit. Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, that is universal. But maybe whether this is you where are a mother or not a mother, whether you are a grandma or a young woman. But I like... think that young woman was not meant to be buried. And maybe this is where night sh- night bitch is coming out. This is being transformed because that young woman that got buried wants to come out. She's so much more dynamic than her friends work. Oh, like, yeah. I mean, granted, this is a very like, um, I mean, we know the behind the scenes and we don't know their behind the scenes. We only know her behind the scenes. But like her ideas are so much more dynamic, just uh, unrealized, you know? Mm-hmm. Um I love when she throws the table up and then abandons the friends. This leads Maybe right into the identity crisis leads right into this next question, which is discuss the theme of isolation in mm. Night Bitch. I mean, she is the author of a lot of her own isolation. Yeah. <laughs> which might be a natural tendency for her. It's not she's not meeting with a gaggle of women from grad school. It's not like a big sorority of women meeting. Mm-hmm. She just had these. I mean, she, in this scenario, she's meeting with these two or friends. Um, so she might not be the kind of pack <laughs> animal that um, has a ton of friends anyway. But I love her like watching the book mommies. Yeah. And not not wanting to engage in them, but definitely wanting to observe them. <laughs> she's like her own Wanda White observing mm-hmm. the book mommies. Yeah. Did Wanda White really exist? There's just a, a great question. We'll think about that. Well, a pseudonym or a figment? Yeah. Because, I mean, there's a, a point where she thinks she sees her and she mm-hmm. chases after her. But what's real and what's not real in this, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like, like da, is, is mother slash night bitch, is she having like a wear animal transformation or a skinwalker transformation? Or is she just taking on the persona like how much of this is a physical transformation you know, the whole time 90 percent of the book i was under the impression that it wasn't actually a physical was transformation not. until the end and then i was like well i guess it is but what about the dog like that one night yeah when she fully transforms and the husband comes home and finds the baby and yeah. sees the dog in With the backyard the yeah. and yet still you know i even though i think at that point they're like who's that dog? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But even still, regardless of that moment, so much of it, I question, like when she takes Jen to the water, is she trans, did she transform into night bitch as a dog? Or is she just this woman allowing these animalistic behaviors? And are Jen and her friends, the other dogs or are they not? Is she imagining? They never, they never actually addressed whether they were actually their own, night bitches of their of their own or if she was so. just i don't think so either because jen when so did she imagine the breakdown? dogs coming on her on her lawn <sighs> maybe yeah maybe the way that she imagined wanda that wanda was like that was as real as wanda yeah i think i can imagine i think the way i interpret that is that she can imagine these women also going through the same experience with her as her yeah but she thinks that she's alone in it. So it's, you know, it's a reflection of, I'm sure how many women feel postpartum or, you know, going back to work or staying home or, you know, making those difficult choices that you feel like you're the, that you're, the you're alone. One. You're the only one experiencing that and, or that you can't talk about it, you know, as openly. So she, she Jen's not going to be like, Oh yeah, no, I'm a dog too. You know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? She's and, aware of that. That sounds she crazy. She might be. <laughs> She might also be a dog, but well, we don't know. The only They're not going to say it. That I cling to of maybe still no, though. Did I see you at the dog park? Was that you? Yeah. She's like, oh, hi. Very subtle. Very me. subtle. Yeah, I wish it was me. <laughs> well, maybe, but I wish but it maybe was. Maybe it was. 
Because maybe she's still she's saying they, yes. But she's but she's not about to admit it in front of everybody. Because if you asked Nightwish, like, like, did I see you at the dog park? She would have been like, no. No, no, that wasn't me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Hmm. Something you said sparked a, um, a thought in me, too, that she's wanting to be, she knows that she needs to not be so isolated, but it is really, really hard to be in a group that's already established mm -hmm. and be the person. Plus, they're, you know, they're the mommies that have it all together, and she, I can imagine she would be like me. I'm in my sweatpants, and maybe I washed my hair three days ago, and... <laughs> You know, and she's still going through something about a postpartum because postpartum has long lasting effects. Oh, there's least. not this time. It's not like a you had a baby and you will have postpartum for like three months and then you'll be fine. At no. least 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't say how post. <laughs> it, it does take a while well, to. And, and even if you're not going to four years before your home runs get anywhere near. Yeah. Pre-pregnancy. I mean, I am not a endocrinologist but just no. from my own personal study <laughs> well i had curly hair i had a baby my hair went stick straight and it took six years to get my curl with each child to get my curls back wow so. wow um hormones go which away. yeah i mean yeah hormones have to do with curly hair. but like you're saying you know you you Post relate to her experience with like the perfect mommies and they look like they have it all together but they also don't i know they nobody don't does. but, you, but you, you don't but though, your isolation keeps you from asking this is how much i like don't buy this part though because it's like oh the pretty girls home alone at home no the pretty girls are having a good time i have never met the pretty girls who's home alone because mm -hmm. nobody's asking her out yeah maybe you're out there but i've never met you all the pretty girls i met through high school whatever they were all having a good time um Again, I'm just seeing what they want me to see. Exactly. <laughs> but, that's, that's, but, that's my whole point. <laughs> but you do find out that Jen doesn't have it all together. But I that's do. That's where I'm like, bullshit, you don't. Okay, I bet you guys can absorb that $10,000 you lost on your stupid herbs easily. Yeah, with your little weird mini bags. <laughs> I mean, your husband hasn't see, noticed yet. No, wait, wait. <laughs> do we also think that maybe these herbs help squash the... The, the beast well, and keep mom the beast bee. down. What is zombie? That's a zom that's a zombie like yeah. play on word. Or is it like a play on when they used to, in the sixties and seventies they had Mother's Little Helper that uh -huh. you yeah. know is basically Well I love how she turns that. that in the final scene, which is a question about the final scene, yeah. which mm -hmm. is why I continue to dance we'll around that. it. That's um fine. how does Night Bitch illustrate the following maxim? The more you do for someone, the more that someone takes you for granted. Mm. Yeah. Very illustrative. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I want to say one more thing about the mommies that I just remembered. So just like women in a group having where their energy doesn't match that like solo person uh -huh. who's wanting to do their own thing. So I have found a new favorite breakfast place. It's Frontside Cafe um, on Front Street in Ventura. Delicious. Great vibe. And I... Um, and sneaking it in a cup, you know, once a week to before work. So it has this very chill vibe, French pop music, cafe music playing, Ooh. all kinds of good coffee drinks, good breakfast. And it's like, I can just sit there and I can read this book. Mm -hmm. There's this group of women who I think were meeting for an 80th birthday breakfast. Mm. And I, it must've been their first time back together in the last year and a half. Uh -huh. But I swear to God, they were a group of cackling hyenas yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> and the, they took this like chill vibe of this place where i just wanted to sit by myself mm -hmm. and they turned it into i mean they're just having a good great time with each other but i was like <laughs> there's other places for your enthusiasm oh like a public restaurant that's open yeah, in right? area <laughs> it's the wrong place how dare you? <laughs> Any place that's not my place. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right? Can, couldn't you have been like 30 minutes later? <laughs> but it was just kind of, I well, I was having this bad attitude. I'm like reading about her hating the other mommy. Uh -huh. <laughs> so not wanting to be absorbed into that group. Well, these wonderful women were having a beautiful time celebrating their friend. They're so loud. <laughs> yeah. How dare you have fun? Don't you see I'm trying to relax? Um, I have a quick question. Let's compare the two different groups of of women. The you have the gr groups. you have the highly successful. Oh, group. like the two friends, like the two her, gr yeah, her the grad school friends, grad school friends versus the mommies versus the mommies. Where she doesn't fit. She doesn't, she doesn't fit, fit in either one. But the mommies, I think, are more welcoming. Well, her friends were, because were 
friendly and i feel like well, i've they, had okay, that same they, experience they were until until they until haven't. they stop even including her in the conversation and they pretend that she doesn't exist because she's not in an in- she intellectual was very busy place chewing with them. kale yeah <laughs> being a cow it's the yeah i mean i think that's an it's interesting like you're, you're in a different place than us and so we have no we don't want to make you feel bad that you're not as smart as us or as successful as us we're imposing our judgment upon you without actually saying but it but i don't think any of that was intentional not at all no. but there is this like underscore in with women i think you know mm-hmm. where like i i have had the experience where i'm with a group of younger some single women mm-hmm. and they think that i'm judging them for not being married or having children and i'm thinking they're judging me because i've got a bunch of kids uh-huh. <laughs> and so this like tension between different yeah different life walks choices of life. where been... you think the other group's thinking you've done it wrong and so with right. that those three women the the working mom and the videographer and mother like you have the three strong choices that happen Mm -hmm. right you have the stay-at-home mother the working mother and the single woman pursuing her career like it's interesting that she chose to illustrate the bridging of gap between the working and women yeah as Mm -hmm. opposed to the um like singling herself out from that Mm -hmm. but there's no bridge no gap she can bridge between her and the working mother yeah like you'd think that the working mother would unite the two yeah so it's interesting that that's what was but, drawn by that scene but we have had a classic i mean it, for as long as i've been a mom there's been this societal almost tension between us and us and them oh you're a working mom or you're a stay-at-home mom and like you know every mom is a working mom <laughs> whether you're getting paid Which for it says. or not i mean yeah. and she but, dwells on and she chews on that so much that she, and she righteously so like I'm working so hard. Oh, I'm not working hard enough because I'm not actually bringing income. I'm a negative impact right. on the budget, you know. But doesn't that <laughs> really key into our worth being tied to a, a salary or a dollar amount or an in, you know? Well, I think that that like these two questions being next to each other, the isolation, her isolation, mm-hmm. either through her own mechanisms, through her own twisted prism, or through the fact of the matter Mm -hmm. um like she holds this place in society where she doesn't value herself and so she's working her butt off to yeah care for her husband little parent for five out of seven days and when he's there he's not taking responsibility until this is the moment in the book i really loved she hands her baby to dad and says you're doing night nights on yeah. the weekends yeah, yeah. and, and he's, he's like, like okay but i i can totally <laughs> well then why the hell haven't you been doing it this whole time yeah. if you were okay with it well, that's one of my favorite why did i have to ask why if we're partners why couldn't you just help there's yeah. um I don't know if you guys ever saw the movie um, The Breakup with Jennifer Aniston and Vince. Um... Mm-hmm. Vince Vaughn? Yeah, thank you. I feel like I did when it came out. Yeah. I don't remember. But... My husband and I went on a date. We were still dating at that time. And it was it's not a good date movie. Uh... <laughs> yeah, no, it doesn't sound like it. <laughs> um, but there's this moment when they're still together and fighting. And he, she says, I want you to want to do the dishes. And his response is, why would I want to do the dishes? <laughs> And so that's anytime I have like introduced something I need Kevin support on. Yeah. That he will do, but I know better than to like, it's the dishes. Why would I want to do the dishes? Yeah. <laughs> um, Nobody like, wants to do bedtime. Yeah. No, no, no one was <laughs> no fun. Even the little, the little boy most especially does not want to do bedtime. Right. Um, it's so easy to like watch that unfold this private time. Mm-hmm. Of, how they handle bedtime be like oh i would never let that happen <laughs> yeah so me as the reader i'm laying it's down like, my judgment on this for mother i know i had a hard time struggling with it like okay he's in a little doggy kennel next oh, I to love your that bed you put him in a yeah. cage the whole idea of a child in the cage just still really bugs me we, but he chose it yeah it's part of like, the doggy game i can I totally know. imagine being like what you know what it's working i don't care yep. he's comfortable he's safe he's sleeping i don't care if he's in a kennel yeah he does she doesn't close him in there yeah she, she lets him put a lock on it yeah she lets That's him true. uh 
choose the level of doorness. And the dog, uh, the dog, the dad <laughs> is like, this is weird, right? And she's like, whatever, no, we're doing nope, it. Don't it works. With so mad. He's sleeping through the night. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. I love her reaction to it. Like, hysterical laughter. <laughs> um, so, I mean, the more someone, the more you do for someone, the more someone takes you for granted. Like, she could have labored on mm-hmm. in silent suffering till she died. <laughs> right. Had Night Bitch not come to save her uh-huh. you know mm-hmm. um my mom had a similar kind of thing she and my dad had a business together she was working full-time tending to the kids doing dinner every night seven days a week and they were having just a quiet time after work one night and he's, <sighs> she, he said you you don't look okay mm-hmm. and she's like I'm, I'm so tired and she just started crying and he's like what's the matter like i have all this stuff that i just listed and He's like, well, why don't we? Sh- I'll do dinner every other night. <laughs> She's like, well, okay. <laughs> Didn't think about asking. Yeah. I, mean, I know. The whole time I'm listening to the book, I'm like, all you have to do is ask. Yeah. All you have to do is ask. Yeah. But it's hard to do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you I know? think other generations, that was not an option. That was well, not yeah, a for thing. For her, this is a this is a modern woman. Yeah. You know? She yeah. she knows she 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 knows. She well, isn't knows, that so but she much like ahead. what we're like a job? I see because I mean we span several generations here, but mm-hmm. still mm-hmm. share in this time of like all married women for some time now. This is our job to mm-hmm. figure out what's okay to make our husbands do or ask our husbands yeah. to partake in as true partners, as opposed to just husband and wife, like. Mm -hmm. I feel like at this point in my marriage, I could tell my husband I want him to do anything because it would help me and Mm -hmm. he would do it. Oh, 100%. Yeah. 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 Um, Yeah, I always joke that when we first got married, I was a really great wife. (laughs) (laughs) Me too. (laughs) You know, I I cooked, I cleaned, I did all the laundry. I did laundry once a week. It was folded and put away before James got home. And then I was like, screw this. I'm not doing this anymore. Oh, I never did that one. No, I did. And it took me a couple years to realize that that wasn't how it was gonna work no and he was like that's fine yeah i'm like all i had to do was ask well, him. Yeah, at some point i had this realization as a wife and mother like i didn't dream of being someone's housemaid right or chef no etc or secretary or or laundress whatever or, yeah, yeah like and so i have these where there's five capable people living in my house mm-hmm. and so we're all gonna just i'm gonna tell you what you need to do like i'm still gonna be a guide for my kids but here's how the how the washing machine works and here's how the dryer works yeah. and here's your dinner night and we're all gonna do these things <laughs> we're all kitchen because of family yeah well but, because no one yeah. i'm not I'm not somebody's maid like of all Mm -hmm. these things. Like, so I abandoned that for like probably four or five years ago. Yeah. Which means Mirabella was five when I started asking her to do her laundry. I show her how. See, (laughs) for us before kids, we shared everything 50, 50 because I brought in a paycheck. Oh, when, when, wait, wait, wait. (laughs) But, and when we only had one child, but I was still bringing in a paycheck, we shared with that. But when I became a stay at home mom, all of a sudden, I became mom to everybody. And I will tell you, the one time he tried to call me mother, I'm like, no, no, we're stopping that. I'm not your mother. <laughs> and some of, but as we moved, moved into a house and the kids got older and my mother-in-law was in, was in our, is in our house with us. Um, yeah. I stopped doing a lot of that because he already had a mother living in his house. He didn't need to. <laughs> well, I think he's also a grown adult who doesn't need a mother. And that's a thing. He's a grown adult. And yeah. there's some things, there was one point where he was asking his mom to help with something. I'm like, no, you will not do that. You're an adult. She's a retired person. You don't, you're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and I will tell her if you ask that again to tell you no. <laughs> because, yeah. yeah. Well, I there's think we just... all just shared how we shed our... Yeah. A willingness to carry that. <laughs> well, a lot of it to me is also, we did scouts because my husband wanted to be involved with scouts. You know, when we were Cub Scouts before the boys went on to be Weebelows and other stuff. And in the beginning, he, you know, he, he ended up 
by default becoming the troop leader, but he didn't always plan things in time. And in the beginning, I ended up being the den mom planner, everything, getting all the supplies. And after a while, I'm like, no. That's why my children don't do scouts. This is your job. You volunteered for this job. And if you don't have time, you have an assistant. Yep. And your assistant, you know. I told my um, leader, we'll do that for you. Like, because that was important to him. My mom didn't have time for me to do Girl Scouts. So I was like, well, the, you, you're an Eagle Scout. I mean, if you want your kids to do this, then mm-hmm. you will take them to these meetings. Mm-hmm. So we don't, we don't, we so don't, don't have, have any, any Eagle Scouts, Scouts in our, <laughs> in our family. No. I uh, did end up taking, I did take them to the meetings because the meeting started before he got off work. But once, once they were, he was no longer the leader and they moved on that's to. That's partnership. And that's yeah. partnership. Yeah, but and that, telling and me to go out and get the supplies for the craft you're going to do tonight. No, you have to come up with something else. But <laughs> I think it's easy to fall into like, well, you fall into whatever roles, you know, you, it works for you. Partnership doesn't always mean 50, 50. Right? No, no. You know what I mean? You know, so well, it's, it's easy to be like, well, I did this today. Yeah. Yeah. You're still technically partners, but finding the balance between oh. the two is. And if you keep tally, like at some point you do need to like draw a line and yeah. draw a boundary. I think that's more what we're talking about. Like definitely tallies. You're just going to get in trouble. No. That reminds me of in Joy Luck Club, the story of the daughter and yes. her husband who were splitting everything yes. exactly 50 50 yes. and paying for the ice cream and yes. whatever hey, you yeah. owe me for the ice cream that doesn't work that i loved when her mom stood up for her yeah <laughs> um and what you said is what i was raised on is mm-hmm. a marriage is 100 percent from both people mm-hmm. um and sometimes you'll only have to do 80 maybe you'll do 100 sometimes you do 20 and sometimes you don't have any energy to do any of it and the, yeah, other, the other person, person was doing 100 percent, so exactly. you're fine <laughs> um what is the source of mother's condemnation to life as a dog and i made my note here specifically i think she condemns life as a bitch Mm. (laughs) that's Mm. our title and i think that's talked about quite early yeah like she and her husband have a talk about how she woke up so upset and she's screaming at the child and she hurt her foot and he's like hey honey you were really uh bitch last night Uh and then the narrator (laughs) goes on to talk about you know why is this why is this why am i a bitch because i had these emotions right yeah but i it doesn't take her long to to embrace it embrace (laughs) yeah and to like take all the good that um life is a dog (laughs) the word bitch in and of itself james and i were talking about this last night because jokingly and people think this is weird but we call each other bitch, like, hey, bitch, sup, bitch, whatever, <laughs> just because it's funny. Okay. And James was saying that he mentioned, or like, James answered the phone because I called him. He was like, hey, sup, bitch. And I was like, sup, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a funny thing that we call each other. And he said his coworker heard him and was like, you just called your wife a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and James was like, yeah, no, it's fine. And his coworker was like, We're not I meeting. said that to my wife, she would leave me. And oh, I was my like, God. No, no, no. If James yeah. called me a bitch in that way, I also would be very context, upset, context. You know, but it's 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 like it, I can take that word and embrace it and be like, no, it's a funny word. But if you use it non-ironically, then I'm going to be very upset with you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he does not have permission for that. No, 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 no. Nobody does. But. No. Um, what mistaken beliefs does mother hold concerning her family? Mistaken beliefs about her family. Hmm. We've talked about one, I think already which is she thought she had to shoulder everything yeah and that mm-hmm. he would not hmm. um i think at one point when she starts to realize herself and 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 look at her needs um she stops calling him in a needy way mm-hmm. yeah and and thinking then that he doesn't need her and she he starts to um to ignore like to reach out to her better so mm-hmm. she's definitely needed by him in a more than do my laundry way. Yeah. <laughs> or I also my think needs. that she realizes, I think everybody thinks that their family is special and not like anybody else's family. Yeah. Like, but, 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 I'm, but we're different than them. Yeah. But everybody thinks that, which means that we're all the, the same. same. You know what I mean? <laughs> because she talks about like, well, I'm a mother, but I'm not like the, the book mommies. Like I'm not like those moms. <laughs> but then, when she realizes like oh they might also be dogs you know what i mean it's like i think she realizes that that her family isn't you know special yeah in the way that she thinks that it is 
Um, I think this kind of is the same question in a sense. What is the relationship between her and her family? What clues in the story suggest that her relationship with her family, particularly her husband, is unsatisfactory? I mean, there's no clues. No, <laughs> like, it's just kind of right out written there. on the wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's not helping her. She's exhausted. She has no enrichment in her life or no way to find her, her own voice again. Yeah. Um, now, where do you, where do you think she got the idea that they weren't partners that they that they're that because I'm trying to think back I don't know when it, at what point I stopped thinking that um we could still split things fifty fifty just because kids came around oh I mean, that's interesting at what point do you think uh, her opinion it's when she that, stopped bringing an income in I'd say mm-hmm. in this scenario like I would say. She, I mean, you, you pinpointed it in your yeah. family, right? That the nature of the relationship she, for her, and he, but not necessarily for him. That's interesting because I had my identity as a mother or a wife. And so even though as a early in our marriage, I was like a lot more attentive to like making dinner ready pretty close to getting home time. And laundry is always a struggle because you had to walk downstairs and there's a laundromat on the premise. It's that it was never really good, but like. I always expected Kevin to prop up what I needed to do and I would prop up what he needed to do. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't, I don't, I I came into my marriage expecting that, Mm -hmm. even though there were things that I over time let myself take on more and more and more for everybody. Maybe that's what empowered me to say, no, you're all doing your laundry now. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I I think it's, pretty realistic the way it's written also her relationship with her husband because I feel like half the time there's certain maybe not half the time but there are certain passages in the book where she just like hates him yeah she's like I hate him he's not doing his part he's not helping me but then the majority of the time she's like you know he's great he's not around I still love him I think he's you know I think he's super smart. You know, she has all these praises for him, but at the same time, she has these dark times where she's like, I hate this guy. Yep. He's never around. He's not helping me. He's there's this point. Oh, when she says, okay, do night nights. And she's like, then she was filled with rage, not at him, but definitely at him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. I'm, I'm going to have to play with this question. Cause I think it's really good, but um, it's definitely geared toward the other novel. Okay. <laughs> um, so the central event of this novel is her becoming, mm-hmm. just becoming, mm-hmm. right? Um, or rediscovering or, or however you want to phrase it. Um, in what ways do those events suggest that the weakening of mother results in the strengthening of the family as a whole? Hmm. I, I love that every time she leaned into it. She yeah. like she came out better. Yeah, and like mm-hmm. the weight of all the things that were exhausting her, mm-hmm. yeah, turned her she into like a better. engaged she... mother. You know, I was trying to figure out what that means, hmm. like for not a dog <laughs> woman. You know, you're a regular <laughs> mom, but you have. She found the thing that gave her release to feel like you know I'm doing it right. You know what I yeah. mean? Like I I found my balance. Hmm. Like, I I wonder what that looks like for the average woman who feels the way that she does, that can't turn into a dog and run through the streets wild and kill a rabbit and yeah. then come home and feel great. Well... Like, what's the thing? I mean, there's a parallel set of habits happening. Her c- creating that space for herself in the guest room. Uh-huh. And making, I mean, art of a sense mm-hmm. in that personal space. Okay. So, I guess... Is it, I mean, maybe it's... It's cutting out time for yourself. It's standing up for what you need. It's being willing to let something... Standing up for what you need. Like, because that's going to look... I mean, the three of us would Mm -hmm. have a very similar idea, I think, of what she needed to do. I'm like, oh, that sounds like a good solution. (laughs) Letting it... Being okay to not be productive that day. Not to to have to check off all the boxes. I mean, there. I remember when the kids were... When I only had two, when they were really little, and my husband would come home and say, what'd you do today? I said... Nothing. I just played with the kids. Okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> and those were, I mean, I, I couldn't do that every day, but the days that I just let things go and not worried about 
the things and it is kind of rewarding yeah. when you take you're in you're in, you're in charge of these little humans but if you're not engaged with them other than some th- something to take care of and i would say like you know, her weakening would be like her weakening tie to or loosening tie to societal mm. societal expectations yeah, yeah. That makes sense. like then she's she like a hippie zen mom happy happy mom passionate wife right. like and and then a creative being again mm-hmm. yeah energy yeah you know, for everything you know for being a wife for being a mother for being an artist again you know um, I think we've also done a pretty good job of getting to this next question, but we could explore Wanda White a little more, I think. Um, what is the significance of the minor characters in the story? Like, I'd say the major characters are, of course, mother, mm-hmm. husband, and son. Husband mm-hmm. maybe a little less so than son. Yeah. Um, so the ones that came to mind were, like, looking at the book mommies, the friends, the grad school friends, working mom mm-hmm. and videographer, and then Wanda White. I mean, Wanda White we haven't talked about a lot right she is the author of the field guide to magical Magical women Women, Mm -hmm. which i want that book i know me too (laughs) (laughs) i love how she just happened on it in this wonderful moment of like i'll just grab a book you know the stupid (laughs) thoughts you have like this happens to me when i'm watching like a horror movie or something like all these things are happening i'm like well, how did, like, all the stupid little nuances. I'm like, didn't she have to return that library book? I kept thinking <laughs> about that, too. Um, maybe you know, she did. Maybe she just let that one go. Yeah. Well, uh, you let can them come after so her. You can renew books, first off. Yeah, you um, renew, and then you get some Which, what a bold whatever. woman. She kept showing her face at story time. Yeah. She has this super late library book. <laughs> um, she... This book is happening right now. Like, yep. this is the second yeah. book this month I read where... It's happening right now yeah, while yeah. I'm reading it. Yeah. <laughs> because it's the end of August yep. into the end into of the September. End, late, late summer. Um, yeah. Which I, is funny to mm-hmm. be in that moment at the same time. Yeah, it's so weird. it's not taking a lot of weeks. It could be two two renewals, maybe. It depends okay. on yeah. if it's a three-week cycle. It just seemed like she had it for <laughs> well, a long time. But I kept thinking that, like, too. She, she's just keeping this book right well, yeah. if, she's, if she gets it from the Oxnard Library, you get it for a month, and then you renew it for a second month. I, oh, there you go. I also related to her when she tells her husband, I have this thing that's really helping me. Yeah. And he's like, can I see it? And she's like, no, you oh, can't wait, no, 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 it. no. Why did no, I tell you about no, it? No, no, no. <laughs> it's my thing. Uh, you can't read my book. I also, because it's like, I have starting to acknowledge that once I say something out loud, I am immediately going to think it ruined and yeah, then oh yeah, reject 100%. it. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. You don't want them to, she goes, you know, you don't want your husband to think that thing that you're doing is stupid or lame or, yeah. or, or, or not helpful or degrade it in any yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. To so make it smaller. Much. Yeah. So much Honestly, of what... any opinion, even if he liked it, the fact that he's in, his opinion is intruding on her private mm, world. Yeah. yeah. But at it's the like, same time, you're like, I don't want to share it. I want it for me. But I also want to share it. Yeah. Because it's making me feel good. But with the right audience. Yeah. <laughs> maybe with maybe with with herbs. Yeah. Uh, so Wanda White is the author of this wonderful book. Then um, Mother starts writing her emails, uh-huh. which I love to. She refers she to. She doesn't send them, though, does she? She does. <gasps> yeah. Oh, yeah, because right. the first one she, like, composes and then um, she has something interrupts her, perhaps yeah. child care. I don't remember what exactly. And then she um, comes back to it later and she talks about hitting sun. Yeah, she pushes lifts, the button. Yeah. yeah. One of those weight lifting moments off her shoulders oh, and right. she immediately felt like completely relaxed. Um, so Wanda is our guru. Right. Our our God figure, mm-hmm. I think she refers to her. Mm-hmm. She says this is like prayer. Yeah. She yeah. also says that these uh, emails are her diary. Yeah. Of this discovery process, definitely a meditation. It's it's meditation journaling kind of thing. So I I kept I haven't done this in a few books of like imagining who would play these characters or oh, how uh-huh. this would be portrayed in um in a film. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I was very dismissive in my head of like all the women. Like everything that's gross about or mother, the way she self describes, uh-huh. like would be so toned down. Like I don't think they would oh, ever 100%. illustrate it as icky as you no. know the author is describing this. Yeah. But then I I want it to be like um, Meryl Streep is Wanda White. Okay, I was thinking Lily Tomlin. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Mm. 
There was something about the elegance of the way she described her running away. Yeah. <laughs> but I like both those. Yeah. Do you, do you have yeah, one, yeah. Karen? Actually, I was, my first thought before you was Meryl Streep. Be, because she plays those type of roles of leading and strong but kind of in the in in the background because Wanda, I feel is she's clearly you never meet her, you know, don't even know if she's alive or if she exists. She is this person who wrote a book who may or may not have be teaching as a professor at a university somewhere in mm-hmm. what, Idaho. I oh, know University no. of Sacramento. Sac- which, oh, Sacramento. Sacramento. Oh, that's yeah. right, Sacramento. <laughs> which uh, it's like maybe she's there, maybe she's not. I don't know. <laughs> I love it when she asks, "Do you have like?" A guidebook for being a Midwestern magical. Woman. Yeah, <laughs> like this is great if I live, you know, wherever they were. <laughs> okay, here's the okay. question we've been all waiting for: uh, What is the importance of the final scene in the story, the professional performance? Mm-hmm. Um, does the tone differ from the rest of the novel? So, would either of you like to share what happens in the last scene of the novel? I feel like I it's fresher for you guys. So well, I listened to I listened to this book. I didn't read it, and mm-hmm. at the time I was doing other things, and I didn't pay attention to the timestamps, and I didn't expect it to end when it did. Oh, because then all of a sudden I was like, "Wait, whoa, we're done." <laughs> That's wonderful. I'm so glad you experienced it yeah. that way. Actually, so I wasn't paying attention to how much time was left. Really, I was like folding laundry i don't know what i was doing but it just happened and i was like oh wait uh, oh uh, that's it okay we're done <laughs> that is a perfect way for you to experience that though because i think yeah. that's how the whole audience no matter yeah. positive or negative experience felt in this so she takes her she shares what's happening with her with jen yes jen is a publicist yes and she's jen like is a broke down mother Yes. And Night Bitch helps her get back to being, to being a, a publicist. publicist. Okay, yeah. So when she says, this scene, I'll pay you eventually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love that in this last scene, there's the roles um, have completely switched. I love that too. Yeah. I love that because in the be- when they, you first meet them, um, Mother is tired and worn down and broken. Mm-hmm. And in her mind, the, the she has an image of Jen having it all together and beautiful and successful and always the perfect. She has a scent. She smells like strawberries, you know. Which actually grossed me out. <laughs> I do not like adult people smelling like fruit, like baby. Yeah, what grown shampoo. up buys fruit scented shampoo? <laughs> okay, we- that's kind of was an indi- like a little alarm bell in my brain of jen lacking identity yeah because that's like a scent of shampoo i buy from my daughter yeah so you're just you're I'm, I like every shampoo. time she said it i was like you're using your daughter's shampoo aren't you <laughs> yeah <laughs> so that this is so by the end and in the course of it jen starts saying how much she admires and how much she lo- you know just really yeah. looks up to mother and and you find out that Jen's really super broken and mother has super is because has strengthened. Yeah. Has it's very transformative. Mm-hmm. She is just very I don't want to say blossom because that's not right. It's like not a just metamorphosis. Yeah, like it's literally. exactly it's a literal <laughs> metamorphosis. But I even love she's the event ambassador, as she dubbed herself. That yes. she went that's the fact that know, she yeah. that she felt yeah. so she went she changed her she claimed her own identity mm-hmm. from a a no a nobody unsuccessful you know less valued person who won't even ask her husband to help to i am the event ambassador biatch yeah yeah (laughs) um i i really that like showed her ownership of partaking Mm -hmm. in this okay so that's the lead up so jen she's like we're all i think we're all thinking publicists of what Right. right so this is not the final scene. No. So um, Night Bitch has a backyard event. Yeah. And there's a stake in the middle of the stage. Under and there's a glass great, dome. Yeah. And there's great music and there's wine and the women and the camaraderie. And chocolate bars. And everybody is dressed in their like favorite, I don't hang out with my kids clothing. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> um, so the scene is set and the um, ambiance of the night is set and... She comes out and demolishes the stake. Yeah. <laughs> and the women is she are a so dog? 
at this point? I, well, that's when I'm back to doubting, like, is it a physical transformation or is it her taking on? I couldn't. Yeah. And well, no, sh- I think they say. Oh, this beast wanders through. But you're like a beast or like a mom. It was a, then a that a the creature or... appeared. There you go. Who, who some might describe as a dog type thing. Or a kind of small bear or a werewolf. I don't know what the F it was. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all kind of a little hammered at this point. Yeah. Too. So right. who's to say, I mean, it's pretty, it's a little safer because they might go, wow, I had the like. What did I drink? What did I drink? <laughs> what was in those chocolate bars? Um, and, and the women are, so, the women who, some women run away at that point. Yeah. And the women who stay are so transfixed that they also become naked. Oh, and it becomes right. this like are, feminine yeah. orgy. Yeah. Of... They were drunk and brazen and horny and rude, <laughs> but they that. were also quiet, reverent, even. Yes, I love that. Was beautiful. <laughs> they were perhaps the best mothers they had ever been. <laughs> <laughs> so, so she has this performance, and then something breaks the. the you, you're there. Something breaks the magic. The mm-hmm. spell is broken by someone exclaiming something. Okay, hold on. Yeah, they rent the vestments. My clothes, my keys. F. Oh yeah. Silence. She turned her eyes to the mother's blood smeared over her face, her cheeks and chin. So, her eyes alight with what? With madness, power, ecstatic knowing feral femininity (laughs) one mother screamed and broke the spell and then another mother yelped and it was done whatever balance had been reached was now horribly off kilter they're running in her front yard naked yeah they're trying to find their clothes and jumping into Ubers. My keys, one mother said. My clothes. <laughs> Another one spat. That then then screen goes to black, yep. basically. So the next thing we pick up, we have about twenty pages left at thirteen maybe. I don't know. It's at the end. She has formalized this performance. Uh-huh. She is putting it on for audiences. When the audience arrives, they are given a small pack of pills. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and we don't know what I imagine this is how she got herbs out of the herb thing. Yeah. And now she is truly successful at the herb <laughs> thing. <laughs> um and so she puts on this similar performance. Mm-hmm. The bunnies just appear. Weren't you scared for the bunnies like right away? Yeah. Oh like, yeah. no. Because <laughs> she loves to snap a bunny neck. Yeah. She d- oh yeah. <laughs> and so they describe these bunnies just appearing and like how did they get on the stage? Is there st- suddenly a woods that is, has bunnies missing that were once in the woods munching and now they're not? Um, the bunnies come on. Some things happen. She and they. They spoil the ending right there. They say she's famous for killing a bunny on stage. Yeah. They're like, oh, great. Oh, that is what's going to happen. <laughs> so there's been a lot. If you are a PETA person, this is not a book for no, you. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Which I'm like, how does she put but, this you know, on? The great big steak on the, but the great big steak on the cover. Right. Kind of <laughs> tells you. Fair enough. The raw steak, yeah. I wonder how many people I put off around town by reading this book. Yeah, like, <laughs> the steak the or the title, reading? right? Um, Real time slaughter of bunnies on stage. Oh yeah, and it's it's lauded and it's hated at the same time. Right, and, and I, her son's involved too. Yeah, yeah. Go go for it. Tell tell about the son coming. <laughs> I can't remember exactly. Well, so at the end, mm-hmm. it's much like the scene with the kitty. Uh huh. <laughs> she kills this bunny. And her son comes on stage and she presents it to him and he starts petting it. Yeah. And then people does it say like they run from the Some people auditorium run away and Well oh. or they exit at okay. that point. This is what those few brave folks see, a feral woman and her offspring with the still warm body of a rabbit in his hands. They will report that the duo emanated a beauty they had not seen before. Despite the protestations of some that exposing a child to such a thing was abuse, no, those who had seen it would argue, here was a woman who knew, who now knew that life unfolded through mystery and metaphor without explanation, who looked upon her perfect son in front of her, a person she had made with her strongest magic, standing right there in a blinding spotlight as if he weren't a miracle, as if he weren't the most impossible thing in the entire world. Oh, I love that. That's the last line of the book, right? Yeah. I I start to think about like, okay, this is interesting. He's what? Three, four, five, thirteen. 
17. Right. Like, how, like, long how long does this, this go for? How long is this show going to run? <laughs> I thought the same thing. If they, it, is it likely to be the show that they put in, put on in Vegas? <laughs> it's not going to have a Vegas installation, I don't well, think. Well, I don't know. I mean, it could. Yeah, I mean, it could. There have been some Lots Then they the would road, probably yeah. have to have other actors come in to play the role of the small boy. <laughs> but then it loses its. Loses yeah. its authenticity. It's magic. It loses the magic when he can like light a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That it's that older. that performance in her backyard is a part of the final wrap up, mm-hmm. um, the final portion. Yeah. I'm just trying to remember what happens after she kills the bunny because then people exit the auditorium and that's when they have their like major hallucinations. And they go into a different space and they. Oh yeah. Hold on. Oh. Collective mania and alleged hallucinations commonly experienced at the show were studied at length by psychiatrists who yeah, concluded yeah, yeah. there must have been a large scale drugging. After all, each audience member was given a small packet. No, that was during the, the theater, not at the backyard. Sorry. No, no, that's what I was looking for. Oh. Yeah. Um, that is at 98% in the oh, audience. Oh, okay, here it is. Um, so she kills the bunny. She growls. They grow uneasy, the audience. It seems she is now stalking them. A few folks at the back rise slowly and edge from the room. A moment of stillness. Then pandemonium breaks out as Night Bitch springs from the stage and the audience members burst from their seats to scream and scatter. Some members will report that it was then that they chased into that they were chased into inexplicable forest area, so thick with leaves and vines. Um, some people find themselves in where mother dens, <laughs> <laughs> and that's when it goes into the psychologist studying these hallucinations and that strange packet of pills they were given. <laughs> right. I mean, she she says a couple times throughout the book that she's working on an art project. Yeah. Just as an excuse for what she's going right, through. Right. That's what and I she figured. says. Well, I did too, and she says, "Oh, you know, I think it might be a performance piece." And, and the whole I time still you're thought thinking, that was like, life, like trying to get through life. No, I, yeah, I can't think she was just making saying, excuses like, and oh, lying yeah, and just I making it I'm, up. I'm acting weird, but you know, it's, I'm doing a thing. But then she's like, you know what? What if I actually do do this thing? Yeah. You know? It, um, it's like it turns on and becomes something real uh-huh. when Jen shows how broken she is. Right. Yeah. She's like, I got solutions for both of us. I can do this. <laughs> um, well, I was delighted by how this book ended up. <laughs> yeah, it was a weird it was a weird journey. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I'm really glad to sit with you guys and find out that you didn't hate it. No, oh, I didn't no, hate no, it. no, 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 no. I'm there's just parts of it that are disturbing. The I first, mean, you just yes. can't get oh, yeah. it as yeah. A, ex- Well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, gutting the cat. You knew, okay, you knew it was going to happen. I, I hope she was like going to clean it, it up before the boy saw I it. I'm like, like she's going to hurry up and clean it. And then the boy sees it. There's no time. She yeah. was she was in that feeding frenzy like sharks get into where she loses time just stops for her, but not for the world around her. <laughs> so yeah. Um no, no, it was really, really good. Yeah. So Yeah. Oh. Good um, choice. Apparently I'm known by our clientele that I pick the weird stuff. <laughs> oh. What else did you pick that was weird? Uh I get that feedback about the ocean at the end of the lane. That's the one that where was good. That that's was the good. one where they're like, you always pick the weirds. Oh, well. <laughs> this goes in that category. This too. is definitely weird. I'm not saying yeah. this, is, this is weird. Uh, but it was enjoyable. Yeah, I like was, weird stuff. It was so interesting. That was good. Yeah. It was, I, I'm glad how it turned out because I first 60 pages or so, I was like, oh. What did I do to us? Yeah, it was it it was a it was strange at the start. I listened to this exclusively driving. Um, I just happened that like on my commute here and back it just you know that's what i listened to um in the first couple of days that i was listening to it like i said i i couldn't figure out where we were gonna go from where we were because it yeah. was like i i just had the impression that at the end she was gonna turn into a wolf that was that or the, a dog that was the end of the book <laughs> yeah. you know she did it but it happened right away and i was like oh wait, wait how where are we going how is this gonna end <laughs> i couldn't you know i couldn't think of a a path that would get us from here to there, but but there was so much more. Oh, All yeah. the good stuff was yet to come. Yeah. So, do you guys have any uh, book recommendations from other things you read this month? I didn't really read much else this month. I started, which I need to get back to because I was enjoying it um, when I uh, was reading it. It was um, 
uh, one from the library, so I have to open up that app to figure <laughs> out what the name of it was because I can't remember. Um, oh, it's called One to Watch. Um, Ooh, and it's about? about, let me find it. It's about a girl who is a, um, one to watch by Kate Stamen London. It's about a girl who's a plus size fashion blogger and she like live tweets and loves the show. That's essentially it's like the bachelor, but they call it something else. Um, and it's about her being cast on the show as a Ooh. fat girl and like <laughs> her interaction with how this all works. And it was, um, <clears throat> it was entertaining when I was reading it. I, I I need to check it back out at the library to finish it, but I was enjoying it at the time. All right. Uh, how about you, Karen? I read a lot of books this month. Yeah, you're, you're a booker. You're, you're, a, <laughs> I'm you're a book devourer. I mean so, that as a compliment. <laughs> so Claire, De- when she was a guest, she recommended Beauty Queens. I read that. Su- super enjoyable. Um, it is a little bit like Lord of the Flies, but with pa- pageant girls, which I loved. But there's more, a lot more to it, and it really touches on femininity and how women view other women and how in our own strengths and stuff. But um, I just started a book called Monster She Wrote, and <laughs> it is really good. Let me see if I can get to the. I love Murder, She Wrote. So is it just well, a play on that? Or? It's more than that. It's actually... Every chapter is... a. Was, let me see if I can go to the about or to the in, intro because that's really what talks about it. Okay. So what it is, is it talks before... Even before there was Mary Shelley that we don't have... I read... This book is about women, gothic, and horror writers of the 16 and 1700s that we would not have any of the horror writing that we have today except for these early women authors who actually wrote under their own names um and so it's really really i like monster she wrote monster she wrote by who is this by oh there's a lot part one the founding mothers margaret cavendish mad madge and radcliffe whom Jane Austen often refer referred to her books in like Wuthering Heights and Northanger Abbey. Um, this is yeah, by huh? Wuthering Heights is not. No, it's not good. But it's not Jane Austen. No, it's not Jane Austen. Who is it? It's the it's Bronte, Bronte. One of the Bronte. Bronte. Yeah. Well, I, Sorry. I can't be that correct. I don't know which Bronte. Oh, I was mixing it up with <laughs> Northanger Abbey, ah. which is Jane Austen. Okay, yeah. so anyway, Monster She Wrote: The Women Who Pioneered <laughs> Horror and Speculative Fiction. By Lisa Kroger and Melanie Anderson. So just started that today. That was really good. And um, I don't want to talk about the next one that I really enjoyed because that leads into the next book. So I want someone else to have a chance. Um, Well, I went back to someone else we read um, months ago. uh, Aaron Morgenstern's The Starless Sea. This book is weird. Mm. (laughs) Like, it's really good. Yeah, it's really good, but it's very surreal. You you read it, like, right after we read Night Circus. Yeah, yeah. So much. It's a hard to digest. You have to read it. You can't. It takes a couple readings to get yeah. through it. There's just. It's beautiful. Just it's, like Night Circus was gorgeous. It's kind of like, trippy. <laughs> not everything works out with a happy ending kind of thing too. Mm. And so, like, I appreciate that Aaron Morgenstern does that. But it's real good. I'm gonna come back to it. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a main character called Mirabelle, and mm. my daughter mm. Mirabella was listening when that character came Aww. on the scene. So I'm trying to like lure her into listening to it with me <laughs> but she doesn't like audiobooks so um but starless sea was really really cool and i finally finished good omens Ooh. i started it forever ago good omens by neil gaiman and mm-hmm. terry pratchett so um i can watch the show now yeah <laughs> but the book was really good yeah and even though i love david Tennant and um the whole cast is is interesting to me i don't know if i want to Burst the book world. Oh, spoil what you, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. the book is fantastic. In that respect, I treat them as two separate things. That's a good point. I don't expect them to be the same because adaptations from a book into a visual genre <laughs> really can't be the same. I was already disappointed because there's this part where, uh, what's the demon? Crowley, uh, how he disciplines his houseplants. <laughs> And I just don't think they did it quite as good in the show. <laughs> uh, talking to your plants is important. Yeah. 
Um, well, what book are we reading? We are going to, I'm embracing the horror, but it's really more thriller horror, not like supernatural-ish, although there might be a little something of that too. Plus, I like the title, My Heart is a Chainsaw okay. <laughs> by Stephen Graham. Uh, where's the rest of this? Jones. Jones. I, I thought it was Jones. Yeah. Um, and let me go to my little synopsis. Hold on. Yeah. So um, before I tell you about this, I because I this is a new book. It came out uh, August 31st. Ooh. It's so new. I had and I was like. Good luck get, finding questions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'll, have, I'll, I'll be taking a, a note from your book on how, on how to do well, that. Well, I have a generic stack of questions somewhere. Yeah. No, I'll prepare for it. Um, I'll probably hi- do like hi- bookmark places that I want to ask questions about later as I read. But to get ready and did, I had not, have not read this author before, so I wanted to familiarize myself with, self with his st- style. And so I read The Only Good Indians. Oh, and oh, yeah. so good. That's in it's, my read list. Yes. Um, only good Indians. It's, it, it's, it deals with like connection and family, um, in a, in a, and in, in a tribal way, he's an indigenous person and something happens. They, he was a group of other kids who do some really stupid thing that basically if um, someone, someone almost dies and it's 10 years later and the ghost of this thing, he thinks has come back after him, even though he moved away from the reservation and bad things is happened. This... That is the only good Indian. So that's, oh. the, that's the book. I um, it was like, this sounds like you've already read it. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> that's only good Indians. And his style of writing, I thought the author, and I also did the audio book. And I thought that the, the narrator was the author because it's a very similar style of speech, but it's not. But anyway, so I really, really, I'm really excited for this, this book. My heart is a chainsaw. He a I am not. Books, yeah, I am not. And he's a professor at, um, in Colorado in Boulder, um, of literature, professor of literature, but, um, it follows Jade, a half indigenous teenage girl living in the small town of Proof Rock, Idaho. With an encyclopedic knowledge of slasher films, she becomes obsessed and entangled in what she believes to be the next Halloween, not the holiday, but the movie, going on right in front of her eyes. It's with this background in fictional killers that she tackles the problem, going over what each would do, and in an almost mathematical precision, tries to decipher what will happen next. In typical fashion to the movies she loves, there are twists and turns and over-the-top deaths written with wonderfully gruesome detail. (laughs) For horror fans, it's like your favorite box. It's like your box of favorite chocolates. Um, it and it goes more into. I don't want to spoil it, but it's. I'm not a fan of slasher films, but I like the author's style of. Uh, I'm not. I'm actually not into scary movies, <laughs> but I like scary books. I've gotten into it. I think that if I watch a scary thing, that then I ask you if you've seen it, and you've seen it. I don't know if it, I've changed over the years. Mm. You know, there was a time where I went with a bunch of coworkers to see Friday the 13th and they're all laughing and I couldn't understand why they were laughing. <laughs> How can you be laughing? This gruesome, horrible thing is happening to someone and y'all are laughing like it's a joke. That wouldn't be funny if it was real, but it's not real, but it's, but, but, but. <laughs> and now I watch like American Horror Story and stuff like that. So yeah, I, mean, I don't watch scary movies. Yeah. I don't watch anything scary. No, I don't, I don't mind reading scary, but I don't like see, watching scary. I don't mind reading scary. I don't want to watch scary. And half the time, like if I do watch something, it's because it's on my Kindle and I can fast forward over the parts that I, I can't do it on a big screen. Yeah. So, so it, again, Stephen Graham you Jones. you skip parts in books? What? I can't skip parts in books. No, she no, no, in the movies. movies. In the movies. Oh, okay. No, I don't skip parts Sorry. in books. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> so many the only, okay, the only, the only thing times I skip things in books is when it's really, really, really technical, and they're going on. For in, uh, what's that guy who wrote Tom Hunt, Clancy? Tom Clancy. Yeah. My mom says that's what puts her to sleep in those books. Like she <laughs> uses them as sleeping posts, <laughs> literally. I stopped reading him after a while because but... I've never read him because that sounded awful. Yeah, yeah. And I can barely yeah. watch read... the movie. Yeah. Honestly. <laughs> anyway, well, so. Yeah. My heart is a chainsaw. 
Well, that was that fun. Was a perfect I'm, pick for October. I'm glad this book wasn't a disaster. <laughs> no, it was great. <laughs> I would recommend it to some people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I I would have to know the person and be like, mm, I recommend it asterisk. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like a, there's a Czech Polyhonic novel called Choke, where if you admit that you read that book to someone else, it's like, or you recommend it, oh. and then they're reading it, it's like, you recommend you it? You read this book? <laughs> I felt that way about I was talking to somebody about a romance novel and this was a customer and she listens so I'm sure she knows what I'm talking about um and I told her I was reading this book and I love this author and it was really you know I'm really enjoying it you should read it and then I went home and I listened to this passage that was rather racy and I even myself was like oh my god and so the next time I saw her, I was like, I still recommend it, but I don't want you to think ill of me because I was listening to it because I read this book. It's still a good book, but, you know, asterisk. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, yeah, there's certain places where you can get people's levels. Like, oh, do you like the Outlander novels? Okay. Okay. So then just, you think... just short of porn you like. <laughs> well, then we will see you in a month for our next episode. Um, at the beginning of October, we'll have a regular um, podcast episode out and new classes October 4th Ooh, that yay. will span all the way till the end of the year. So yep, check yep. those out too. Um, and we'll see you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.